Peter King, NBC Sports, and his column, of course, Football Morning in America, joining us on the program. Pete, thanks for joining us. From a football standpoint, where do these allegations against Deshaun Watson uh, impact his trade value? Well, Dan, uh, I think it makes it very difficult for any team, most likely between now and the draft. Uh, it's going to make it very difficult for any team to trade for him as long as these charges are in the air. Um, if you are the Carolina Panthers, uh, clearly interested in Deshaun Watson. Uh, and if you are the Miami Dolphins, who may be interested in Deshaun Watson and the Jets, same thing. How do you make a trade for a guy who has uh, numerous uh, sexual assault charges? Uh, at, or I'm sorry, allegations. And that's all they are now, allegations. I don't know how you make that trade now uh, with the allegations in the air against Deshaun Watson. Are the Texans more likely to want to deal him now with what's going on or once this, this is resolved? I think that is moot. If you don't have, I, I don't, Dan, I really don't see how a team can make a trade. I, I don't. I don't see a trade being made on this until, we have some knowledge of what exactly happened in these cases, in these alleged cases. So the Texans could want to trade him more today than they did a week ago, but I don't think it really matters unless you've got there. I mean, I suppose, I suppose there could be a team out there whose owner and or general manager and or coach could say, we'll do this regardless of, uh, what the allegations are. I just can't believe in these, in this day and time yeah. that anybody possibly could do that. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and if I'm negotiating or had been negotiating or trying to negotiate, if, if I'm coming back now, my offer is not going to be the same. I'm sure for Deshaun Watson, but now the NFL is involved, Peter, to what degree, I don't know. But now all of a sudden, if that's on, you know, the, the commissioner's desk, you know, that could take weeks. It could take months before they of course. get around to this. I, you know, in the long run, and I'm not saying that, uh, that I, I don't, we don't know any of the details, Dan, but if, if there were some offers to try to settle these cases, uh, I mean, at, at this point right now, the one thing I am wondering is, was there some thought on the part of Deshaun Watson and, uh, you know, his legal counsel to seriously consider trying to settle these cases beforehand? So basically this would go away. Yeah. And, and those are the things we simply don't know. Deshaun Watson has come out and very strongly said, I have never uh, taken liberties, such liberties with women. Uh, and so we'll see what the, what the truth is coming forward. I was curious about this, mentioned it a couple of days ago with Russell Wilson and uh, that offer that was made by the Chicago Bears. Seattle didn't counter the Bears offer. Normally, if you go in and you know, make a bid on a house, the owner, usually the seller, comes back and says, no, I want this. Why did Seattle even engage if they weren't even going to counter the Chicago Bears offer? Professional courtesy. That's my guess. Um, because, mm. Dan, listen, suppose I, I don't, I said this two weeks ago in my column and got roundly, what an idiot you are for, for saying this. But the Chicago Bears never, ever, ever, ever had the ammunition to go get Russell Wilson. It just, they just didn't. Everybody said, well, wait a second, three ones. Well, this year's one is number 20. And if Russell Wilson is going to the Chicago Bears, they probably are going to be just as good or better than they were in 2020. If that's the case, what are you trading? The 20th pick in the draft this year, the 25th pick in the draft next year, the 23rd pick in the draft two years from now? And in addition, John Schneider made a trade with the New York Jets uh, almost a year ago or, or eight months ago. 
for Jamal Adams. And I firmly believe that one of the reasons that he paid a heavy price for Jamal Adams is that he knew that in 2021, the draft was going to be shrouded in mystery. All these players who didn't play in 2020 or, you know, because they opted out or their teams didn't play much or, I mean, Trey Lance uh, played Division One AA and has one game in the last 400 days. So I mean, or 430 days, something like that. So how do you how do you how do you figure out who these players are right now? And so I do think that John Schneider, uh, why not listen? Maybe there's something that he totally does not expect. What if he gets offered? Three ones, three twos, three threes, or so, you know, and and Khalil Mack. Does he listen? I would say probably, but three ones that are all in the twenties for a franchise quarterback who says he's playing well into his forties. It's just not in even remotely an equitable trade. How do you think this plays out with Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson? I believe that at some point barring some team coming to make an incredible offer, say the Miami Dolphins, Tua Tonga Valoa, uh, the third pick in the draft, and a couple more very high picks. Uh, then I think John Schneider would have to listen to it. Now, he would have to, you'd also have to figure that, it, it, you know, he would have some regard for, for Tua Tonga Valoa, and I don't know if he does or not. But assuming that he doesn't get traded, Pete Carroll will put on his don't worry, be happy coat <laughs> and meet with Russell Wilson and probably sometime in May. And they'll all live happily ever after, even though they really won't. Dan, how did Pete Carroll get along with Marshawn Lynch for so long when Marshawn Lynch was making his life hell? How did he do that? He turns the other cheek. And he thinks to himself, if, you know, as long as I don't pay attention to it, acknowledge it, all that stuff, it's, it, it can't hurt me. Whether it did or not, I don't know. But in my opinion, Russell Wilson is not going to be incendiary when he gets inside the team this year. That's just not who he is. He's Peter King. His uh, must-read column every Monday morning is uh, Football Morning in America. The Arizona Cardinals got a little older. Did they get better? I think that's a fantastic question. I mean, you know, I just finished, I started writing a little bit of my column yesterday and I just finished writing a section about the Arizona Cardinals. And, you know, my, my thought about AJ Green is not that the Arizona Cardinals acquired a great wide receiver. From watching him play in recent years, they've acquired a guy who's been hurt a lot and been indifferent. And I, I mean, will he suddenly be reborn outside of what he may have considered a horrible place to play in Cincinnati? I don't know. We'll see. But I have not seen one, ev one bit of evidence that A.J. Green can be great again. Maybe he can. And if he can, it sure isn't based on what we've seen the last two or three years, one of which he missed entirely with a knee injury. And so I don't know about that. Now, J.J. Watt, obviously, I think he definitely has some, some football left that could be very, very good, especially playing opposite or, or with Chandler Jones, because he never had a guy who was as good as Chandler Jones uh, in Houston. Now, again, we all know how much time J.J. Watt has missed. And so, you know, we'll see. But right now, you know, I looked it up, Dan. J.J. Watt, Matt Prater, A.J. Green were in the 2013 Pro Bowl. And now they're all, they're going to be 32, 33, and 37 this year, Prater being 37. So, you know, they've, they've won the, the famous free agency, the Arizona Cardinals have. I, I don't know if they're significantly better. Now, Rodney Hudson, now that is a, that's a, a fantastic addition because he's still in his prime. 
and they'll need a couple more of those guys to be in theirs. What do you think the Jets are going to do at number two? Take Zach Wilson. I just, I can't imagine. I didn't think they were going to trade for Deshaun Watson anyway. You know, those in the league who know Joe Douglas well know that he loves the draft and he loves building through the draft. So I've always believed that they're going to sit there and take the next best quarterback after Trevor Lawrence. Now, I think it's Zach Wilson. Maybe he's in love with Justin Fields. I don't know. Uh, but I think they're going to take a quarterback at number two. And Sam Darnold's future is where? You know, I've got to think that he'll get traded for some pick between 40 and 75, you know, uh, on close to the draft. Uh, because, you know, look, Sam Darnold could well be a one-year addition for some team. All along, I've been saying that the 49ers should trade the 43rd pick in the draft for him. Uh, and I still don't think it would be a bad idea, but the problem, the only problem with trading the 43rd pick in the draft is in essence, you're trading for a guy who probably is going to be your backup quarterback the whole year. And then is going to be a free agent because clearly you aren't going to exercise his fifth year option. So it's a tough thing to trade the 43rd pick for a one year trial, even though, Sam Darnold would make your team better for this particular year. And look, we still don't know absolutely with certainty that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be the 49ers quarterback this year. We think he's going to be it, but we don't know that for sure. Pete, have a great weekend. I looked at your bracket. Uh, do you know what you're doing with your uh, picks? No, <laughs> I don't have any idea. I don't, I, Dan, I don't watch college basketball. Todd Fritz, me being a good soldier, Todd Fritz asked me to send him a bracket. And so I did. And so I got Florida State going a long way. And I got the Bobcats winning a game and blah, blah, blah. You got Arkansas, Gonzaga. You got Illinois winning it all. Yeah, I do. Okay. Is that possible? Yes. Yeah. It is? Well, I got to tell you, Pete Thamel told me who to pick. <laughs> okay. Because I, I texted him. He's the Yahoo sports guy. He's a good friend of mine. And I said, who should I pick? And so he told me a couple of teams that he thought were good and told me some teams that weren't good. So I don't know. I filled it out. All right. Good to talk to you as always, Pete. Have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you, Dan. You have a good one too. That's Peter King, NBCSports.com, columnist, Football Morning in America.